go back to further down the meeting since that's you and John. All right, we were the ones here. Yeah. That makes sense? It does. All right. Slide right into action items. Agenda item two. Uh, the cemetery shed um, was posted on e-news and we asked people to get back to us by what close of business today or 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Did we have any interest shown? No. Okay, great. We'll take the next steps with that. Uh, Dick, you had a couple of action items on there. Uh, you were going to talk to Chief Pearlie about the slow signs on Green Hill Road. Yeah, um, we had some signs up. They weren't, uh, I guess, posted appropriately or in good spots. Um, we're kind of going to wait and see if some of the families that have children up there um, have input. They did have a, uh, a few days of having a patrol car up there to monitor and I think they're, it's really effective to slow people down to have a police presence. So they did do that and uh, now I think we're just going to wait for uh, some feedback on the signage as to, you know, what would be appropriate, what signs do people pay attention to? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we never could figure it, that out. Okay. Uh, they certainly don't pay attention to speed when it's signed, so Hi. all the rest of it, uh, we don't know. Anyway, we'll keep watching it. Great. Thank you. And uh, Eastfield Road? Eastfield Road. I went up there and looked. Uh, you know, it's a work in progress. That's right. Uh, you know, there's construction on two units, or mm -hmm. two buildings going on. I don't think that any of the cul-de-sac or the roadways are in a final condition, so mm -hmm. I would think, you know, just give the contractors uh, time to buff it up. It's to their advantage to make it look well because they're trying to sell those units to people that are going to be driving up there yeah. in inclement weather and nice weather, whatever. Mm -hmm. So if the road looks terrible, they're going to go, I don't want to get involved in this. Mm -hmm. So I would say that in uh, due time or appropriate time, that will be taken care of. Great. Thank you. And uh, just to update you, John, Action on Cemetery Shed, uh, had a posted and asked for uh, responses to come to the office by 2 p.m. I saw that. Is there any interest? No one, uh, no one responded as of 2. Mm -hmm. that, was the other, that was the only update you really missed. Um, mm -hmm. you missed it. Letting it go now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. James. Yeah, we had one expressed interest, and that was the only interest. So we'll make arrangements uh, after the meeting to uh, finalize that whole process. Um, upcoming meetings, we've got two scheduled in December. Thursday, December 14th, and Thursday, December 21st. Both of those right here at 4 o'clock in this room. And our January meetings are also set. We've got Thursday, January 11th and Thursday, January 25th at 4 p.m., both of those meetings, and right here in this room. And then the first budget hearing will follow the January 25th regular selectmen's meeting. So we'll begin the, uh, the budget hearing directly after uh, we finish up our regular meeting business on January 25th. Hope you can join us for those. Let's circle back around to agenda item one here, John, and oh, okay. uh, look at approving the minutes from our uh, November 9th meeting, um, that was uh, you and Dick, so we wanted to table that until you were here. Did you get a chance to go through these mm -hmm. minutes? Yeah. Are there any edits, mm -hmm. anything you uh, caught? Mm -hmm. I'm slip through, but, I'd uh, make a motion to accept the minutes. And I'll second. Okay, excellent. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Yeah, nothing. Hey, That's right. Speaking of, <coughs> speaking of minutes, if everyone can make sure to sign in. We do have um, Martha Tobin's going to be taking our minutes again remotely off the video. So 
if everyone can make sure, we'll send her the sign-in sheet to make sure she accounts for everyone here. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good point to make. It will be done remotely moving forward. Um, all right. First uh, item on the agenda for public comments. Sarah. Yes, uh, I'm still very concerned that you're holding off on putting up any signs. Winter is coming on Green Hill, and people are walking their dogs. We're going to have snow banks, and the traffic going up through, be it uh, local contractors and residents, are still traveling at a rate of speed. And I'm really very concerned that um, you feel that you have to have more input but fine, I, I, can, I have spoken to the people with children on the road, and I cannot explain to you why people are so hesitant about coming to a public meeting and forcing their opinion, but they are. Um, that's number one. And number two, at the last meeting that we had, um, we spoke on financial responsibility and how the 3% was computed by the selectmen. And I believe we were informed at that meeting that really there was no other towns or there was no piece of paper that we could get where we could see where you compared with other towns. And that the, um, it was basically just discussed here in the building. And I'd like to know if you could, could uh, explain a little bit of, of where you're getting your three percent that you feel needs to be done all across the board. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Circle back around. Uh, John, Dick, either one of you have any responses? No. Okay. Yeah, I'll just briefly respond before we move on on the three percent pay raise. Uh, that That's how Conway handles it. They have a step system in place and uh, and they go through uh, step raises every year with their staff that um, that are, are part of a 3% pay raise formula. And they <coughs> said that Conway has a system in place where they have automatic 3% pay raises. That's what we were referring to, their step system. So, More comments from the public. Joyce, sorry. Go Please. ahead, B. No, no, wait. Okay, doesn't matter. Go ahead, Joyce. Um, I'd like to know if there's an evaluation that's done uh, in order to determine whether or not people receive the increase. Uh, performance evaluations are done by the selectmen of the departments they liaise with and by the department heads of their staff every year. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, it's not, there it's isn't not a 3% pay raise, raise contingent on I mean, I think the theory is that if they weren't working out, they wouldn't be here. So, uh, but uh, I, I think that it might be a good idea. Uh, and again, we can put this together and go through it. Um, when there are more people in the room on the 25th, we can put together a presentation at that first budget hearing and uh, spend a little bit more time on it than maybe we did last year or be a little bit more coordinated and organized with a presentation. Is that? Something that uh, would would make sense to you? Sounds like it would uh, be a good step. Okay, great. B. You said the way you presented it, it was going to be written in the policy. I checked with the Conway selectman. I checked with Bartlett and Albany, and they don't have it written in their policy. Well, we, that's and we don't have a step system, so that's the difference really between the two towns. But uh, well, that's, you get three percent if you put it in the policy; it's just automatic. They get it every year. Okay, same as the step. Yeah, same as the step. Uh, Sarah, one more time. Yes, can I just approach with some information? Sure. Sure. Uh, I came last year about it, and I would like to know if you could do this with the budget. Uh, for the budget hearings. What it is, it's from the Jackson uh, School District, and it tells you the assignment, which would be like principal teacher Gail Dembrowski, her annual salary, 84688 longevity stepping, 125 statutory benefits, 20301 and total pay for her is 105100 uh, 
fourteen dollars. I would like to know if there's any reason that the town of Jackson Selectman could not do that for our employees as well. It makes it uh, much easier to see the total cost rather than trying to flip back and forth and so on and so forth. The Conway school budget that you Jefferson was very uh, good about doing that for me, but I, I think that publication should be, and I've already spoken and asked the school board to do it in the town, their town warrant, as well as asking you as the selectman of Jackson to do it so we can see, because to my way of thinking, when you say somebody gets a pay, wa pay excuse me, a wage of um, uh, salary forty nine thousand seven hundred and ninety eight for our administrator, that's one part of her wage. It's not the entire package of what the town is paying out. And I feel by presenting it in that manner, everyone can just, you know, look at it and say, okay, this is what we're paying for the total. And also at the bottom of that page, you'll notice that it says the total amount paid for insurance as well. Understanding fully the, the right of privacy and so on. But it does give you a full total figure. That figure also does not carry retirees in, which I think would be very beneficial too, because basically it's usually, you know, I know we get reimbursed from the retirees, but I think having the full time regular employees and then, you know, the, the amount that the retirees pay or whatever, however, can be done. But I think it can be done so it doesn't invade anybody's privacy. Okay, thank you. Other comments? John, any, uh, anything to add to it? Okay. We take a look at that in, uh, between meetings and see what we think about that. If we need to put it on an agenda as an agenda item, we should do that moving forward at some point or just make sure we address it at the first public hearing, whichever one we're ready for. I've got one more uh, public comment coming later in the meeting, Sarah. Uh, let's go right to the building inspector's report. Kevin, how are you? Right. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, Kevin. What do you got for us this week? Uh, looks like six new permits. Uh, <clears throat> we're at 32 uh, Middle Mountain Trail. It's uh, construction of a shed dorm around the house. That's already completed. And we have uh, a 47. And it's completed, but we're just getting the permit. Yep. So. I've been through that before. Yeah, but you found it in construction? Uh, no, they actually called up and asked that they started it. And I've been through this with these people before, and I said, "Go get a permit." They got a permit, and um, well, you're seeing it on here. So it was signed, and, okay. and so yeah, so, yeah, it went up pretty quick. Um, Forty-seven unit eight, Dan Place Road, um, replacing the existing deck. We have 28 Tricky Road, uh, in the bathroom. And then these are, the next two are uh, renewals. Um, this is on Eastfield Road, um, 61 and Unit 1 and 2. Um, renewals of the um, commons that were completed. New construction. Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, the last one is the uh, 10 Black Mountain Road, the uh, sign permit for the school. And that's in place. That's in place, yeah. And yeah, we uh, <laughs> that went round and round with that too. So I, we actually wrote him on uh, my last <coughs> minute, I got one and asked again. And then he finally sent an email, and then that put the channels down to the janitor, and found out a permit, went back to the school board, they signed it, and we found out. Great. So, and then, and I just like the comment on. Uh, just in the last week, I've done three inspections, and I'm not going to actually name units, but just the amount of not having smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. And this was a, a, a condo at Black Mountain. No, no working smoke detectors at all, our, our um, CO. And then there was a cabin that I went to that we were doing some work up on, um, on uh, Juniper. Uh, same thing, no smoke detectors, no carbon monoxide detectors. And then, uh, 
uh, a house on uh, Old Jackson Road, same thing. Um, and it's just, <coughs> you know, some of these Watch places, you. well, two of them are second, basically second homes, I believe. One is a, is a resident in town, but just that, you know, we're, we're still finding houses without that. It's just, so now they're going to install and have hardwired and working smoking tanks in these places, because it is required. Now, these are houses that have a building permit? Yes, and so when I was doing the inspection, I usually look for that yeah. and ask. And, and usually, lots of times, an uh, electrician's involved, so I say, well, you have an electrician there, why not? Let's get some smoke detectors in the building. Right. So, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, you'd think today that some places would have working ones, but they don't. Very interesting. So, is there, like, maybe a way to get... Um, the word out to increase the word well, I, I just, your, yeah, That's a good question. I mean, <coughs> I think, you know, just with the clocks going back every year, they always say to place your batteries and all that, and people just don't pay attention, I think. And, um, I did. Well, <laughs> some people do. <coughs> and, that's too bad. So. It's just a potential disaster ready to happen Well, sometimes. yeah, it's just something really simple that you can do. Smoke detector, you know, definitely 40 save bucks. your life. Right, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. Any other questions or comments for Kevin before we turn loose? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next up is agenda item three. Or, uh, sorry, five. New business. First up, fire department budget. Chief Henry here to discuss line item increase requests. So on the smoke detector that yes. Kevin just brought up, yep. um, it's out there. I mean, it gets talked about at the school. It gets talked about on e-news. It's on the news at least once a month. Someone's burning their house down and don't have a smoke detector. Mm -hmm. Uh, last year there was a fire chief in southern New Hampshire who died because he didn't have a smoke detector. Um, so it's, man's castle is a man's castle and they do what they want. Um, but it's still the number one, I mean, we don't have fires at, I mean we do, at hotels or businesses. If you have fires, it's in a residential place. Mm -hmm. And that's why the fire marshal's office is still trying to push, um, Sprinklers in residentials because that's where we kill people and that's where we burn down buildings. The number one cause. So it's not like people don't know. Um, I think in today's world, if you don't know you need a smoke detector, you maybe live under a bridge or something. Mm -hmm. so I need them, yeah. All right. I Thank you. So. And the reason I'm here today is to bring up some thinking for you guys on budget season coming up. Um, I'd like to, you guys get copies of my thing. I must get copies of that. Yeah. Yeah. And the line item I have for special equipment, um, as you probably read in the thing, at the time is we'd like to increase it instead of buying two sets of firefighter gear. Um, a year, we'd like to increase it to two. Um, increase it by two. By two to four. <coughs> um, there's been a couple different discussions on how we do it, uh, but basically what it comes down to is today's fires are a lot hotter than they used to be, and they're a lot, with all the chemicals involved, the plastics, the fabrics, they're putting out ethylmethyl eth bad stuff way worse. I mean, if we go to a farmhouse fire for older people that it's, it's far different than a fire in here, you know, if you had a farmhouse from the 1950s full of wooden furniture and stuff, it's, it's much different than today's buildings loaded with fabrics and chemicals and plastic. Mm -hmm. um, even to the point where one of our newer policies is, even if you're not in a building, when all you're going to do is be in the vicinity of a building. Um, even if you're not wearing an air pack, hoods are a big thing for cancer reduction. Um, we got getting everybody to you got to wear hoods just to protect the neck and as much as you can, mm -hmm. um, even if you're not wearing an air pack. So the materials in the new gear, um, 
have changed drastically just in five or six years um, for fighting cancer and all that stuff. Due to the cost of living increases all the years, um, our special equipment we purchase that goes up every year, everything we buy from batteries to tools to jackets to helmets to you name it. The new gear is much lighter than our older gear that is even 10 or 15 years old. Um, the to you know, so that's basically it in a quick nutshell. Um, I've actually got a year, this is like my capital plan for myself for who needs what gear and when and stuff like that. So a couple options, um, we'd like to buy two more sets, so that means I need another five grand in my special equipment budget in order to buy everything we need on a yearly basis, going from two sets to four sets, um, which would put us at 25,000, I think, on the special equipment line item instead of 20. Uh, a couple options, you talked to Julie in detail the other day about it, and she had a different option. Some other people within the department in the um, people in town thought we'd buy 10 sets of gear all at once. Um, we did this in 1998 and 1999. 1997, we, our gear was in terrible shape. We didn't have it much. We had it, but it was old and in bad shape. So in 98, we bought 10 sets of gear in 98, and in 99, we bought 10 sets, and everybody on the department had brand new gear. Um, and that really put us in really good shape for a long time. And then we got, in the past eight, 10, 12 years, we've been buying two sets a year, every year. And it's worked good, and we're not in, I'm not gonna say we're in terrible shape, because we're not. Um, we just need to step it up a little bit. Um, How many sets of the new gear do you have down? Well, we buy two sets a year, so I've you got... You know, the new stuff that, you know, is lighter. And um, well, we got two one-and-a-half sets this year that are brand-new, modern. Um, and then the last couple of years, they're still decent. Yeah. That's a relatively yeah. new new uh, system that you have here. That, yeah, you know, I mean we, we've, got, we've and, got some people that don't necessarily go in a building or near a building that have gear from the late '90s that yeah. just keeps them warm. Right. Uh, technically, by NFPA and probably your insurance company, ten years are supposed to get rid of it. I mean, it's two thousand bucks for I just <coughs> bath of set of gear. It's twenty one hundred bucks for jacket and pants. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we're doing, we've got five or six people that I'd say, if needed to go inside of a burning building, I've got four or five people that are really qualified to do that. Um, they'll spit through gear in five years. I mean, before I was chief 10, 15 years ago, a set of gear wouldn't last me five years and it'd be toast, ripped, burnt, damaged, whatever. Crispy. Um, Sorry. So that's that's where we're at. Um, something else I was going to bring up, and I lost my train of thought. So how and then the third option was that Julie came up. We have a fire, an existing fire equipment expendable trust fund um, that was created early two thousand for something to do with one of the fire trucks. And she thought of putting money in that and then using money out of that to buy gear, whether we needed to buy one or two sets one year or five sets in one year. And it's equipment, so I did check with the trustees and it would qualify under that pre-existing interpretation of equipment and gear. How much is it right now? Uh, 1100 Eleven hundred. There hasn't been much money in it and hasn't been used for yeah. a while. I forgot about it until she, she mentioned it. We haven't put any money in it recently, I assume. Mm -hmm. No. How many members in the department now? Um, on the roster, we have like 30. Okay. On the roster. Um, probably 10 are probably fairly inactive. 
and we get seven to 12 on a regular basis. Uh, are students assigned to individuals? Or yes. Coming that's in that's what I was, I lost my track of train of thought there. The other thing that's big in the cancer discussion in the fire service um, is having two sets of gear. And we definitely wouldn't have two sets of gear for everybody. But there, what we're doing, like Beth, for example, her new gear, she kept her old gear, which is still usable, so that if we're trying to wash gear way more often than we used to, um, like every time you need smoke. So when her gear goes out of service to be washed and dried and takes a while to dry, she has another set that she can use, right. especially for the people that are here all the time. I mean, right. I definitely, you're never going to outfit everybody with two sets of gear. Mm -hmm. It's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another thing that we're, we're doing. Like I have, I have an old set of gear and a new set of gear. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there might be one other person that has an older set of gear. So by stepping it up a little, I mean, yeah. I mean by no means we're, we're not in terrible shape. But, mm -hmm. but if we can figure out a way to step it up, um, that's what I need to do. <coughs> okay. Um, as I said, I have a gear plan, which basically is two sets of gear for... If so we were to buy 10 sets, as an example, all at once for the cost of 20 grand, that would put us in really good shape for a while, and then we could stick with our two sets, buying two sets a year to stay up with it. We kind of do the same thing with a lot of stuff, like air packs. I, I had a spell where I was buying an air pack every three or four years to keep up with it and not get behind. Uh, radios, I buy a portable radio every year so we don't get behind on radios because they're 3000 bucks a pop. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a handful of things that we try to buy every year so we don't get behind like we did way back. If you bought 10 sets in option 3, yep. will we still need to do 2 sets every year after that? Or well, if the next year, no, I mean the next year or two we could probably use that two sets a year on something else. Um, but I wouldn't want to go too long before I, because it's still, start, you start there's, 20, there's at least 20 of us that are regular members. Um, so buying 10 sets, you've still got other ones that are getting old. I mean, mm -hmm. that doesn't, 10 sets doesn't outfit everybody. So we might be able to step that back a little bit, but I wouldn't say I'd do away with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a year. Or yeah, that's what i saying, maybe to go. But there's, I mean, I got a large diameter hose is coming, four inch hose um, is getting really old. So within the next few years, I got to spend this stuff's really expensive. Um, I plan on buying some next year out of my regular budget. Mm -hmm. So there's, and then it, there's a few big items coming up that mm -hmm. I'm going to have to be careful with mm -hmm. so that I can keep it within budget to purchase that stuff. So. How much is in your equipment line item right now? Special equipment is twenty thousand. Right now. Yeah, I think I spent twenty one this year because I had some last minute stuff. You have three right. left. No, no nothing left. You're over there. Okay. Okay. I don't know how much it's not left. much, but right. <coughs> let me find your budget sheet just to make sure. I'm right. My comment to Jay, as far as a budget perspective, I'd rather see it steady instead of spike. And yep. then wait, and then spike. I'd rather have a oh, long. No, ours are wrong. Uh, yeah, it's wrong. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Special equipment is fifteen grand. Two thousand seventeen. Fifteen grand, not twenty. So if we look at two thousand eighteen special equipment, I'm probably not going to get everything. <laughs> I had gear, four sets. I gotta buy two pagers is a thousand bucks. A portable is three thousand bucks. Then the miscellaneous little things we buy if we need a helmet for somebody new, flashlights, badges, hoods, gloves, miscellaneous, everything, thousand bucks. Five inch hose, which is uh, 500 feet is 4,000 bucks. Everything I just added up is 25K. So there's gonna be something there that I don't buy. This year. Even if we increase from 15 to 20. So. 
Got it. So, uh, I, I don't necessarily have a preference. I know a few of the firefighters, I think mine is here, <laughs> had suggested the, Billy had suggested to buy it all at once. Um, I don't really have a preference which way we do it. Um, Dick, did you work with Jay on this? No, I, yeah, I don't know if we got a chance to talk in detail about this. Not to detail. No, we okay. talked about the needs. Yep. Um, I do agree with Julie about not trying not to have too high a spike in any one year. Mm -hmm. If we can just mellow this out, it. Uh, Certainly goes better at the budget hearings when people are coming in to ask questions. Of, you know, what's that all about? Um, but just as as a policy, it's better to have a you know kind of a smooth line. And should we be funding this expendable trust and get some money in there so that you have access to it? Not so that you can buy, you know, everything on your wish list, yeah. but you can buy the things that come up that you need uh, that you haven't really budgeted for in any year. But then the, if you have it in your expendable trust, then you can say, you know, well, we lost, you know, two portables in a fire. You know, they're gone. Yeah. So Are there any restrictions on what can be spent in the... On that particular article? No. I think it depends on it how just, you interpret it's, it's the it's word very, equipment. Yeah, it's, it's very general. I mean, you, you said it was originally set up for a truck repair. It's just equipment, and it's very general. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Right? I think it was originally set up for... Before we bought Engine 6, Engine 3 had a bad water tank, rotted out, and we were talking about purchasing... Yeah. Engine six, so we started that. I think that expendable trust fund that started and money put in it for for transmission or water tank repair or something. I think it was water tank repair, and then we didn't. I don't think we used it. We used it on something else, and then in '06 we bought the new truck. Okay. Thoughts, John and Dick on? I think a little bit of both. I, I you know again. Filling, um, funding op the um, the uh, expendable trust fund a little bit, and maybe throwing five in for the, the uniforms. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see the need for the turnout here, and we should keep up on that. And I think we should, you know, try to put money into the expendable trust so that the say the five inch hose that has to come up, we've got some money for it. Ahead of time. Yeah. So, and and that may be a way to smooth things out. Yeah, we're gonna have to go up right now, but then we keep it on an even level, funding the expendable trust, and also you know purchasing the equipment that you need. So someplace in there is the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we can. <clears throat> um, we can certainly direct Jay to add 5000 to the operating budget mm -hmm. for next year and at the same time take a closer look uh, between now and when we uh, finalize our, uh, our warrant articles on whether we think we should be asking the townspeople to support an amount into that warrant article and what it would be. Uh, and we'll take care of the immediate needs next mm -hmm. year as well as have him knowing that if he's got equipment, especially equipment throughout the year that's wearing out and is a safety concern for the people that are out there, then he's, he's got a, a, a fund that he can, that he knows is there. Does that make sense? Just to me. Okay. Sounds good? Yeah. Yep. I mean, Was there a hand? Yeah, Bill. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I, I promised him I'd come down. I, we have many conversations, and I'll be the bad guy and take the heat here for convincing him to bring this to the table so that at least it's in your mind. If you've got 20 active guys, just in case anybody doesn't know, this guy and this guy worked on me a couple of years and finally got me to come down and 
give them a hand with my old knowledge, and sometimes that's not good. But anyway, <laughs> I, was, I am the bad guy on pushing him to bring this to the table on a big, big lump sum purchase. Yeah. Uh, my, my argument was this. I looked at, without seeing the budget, without having any time here, any conversation, it doesn't appear that there were any huge needs of special article stuff this year in the, the, in the you know, police, fire, and highway. I know Pat is talking about potentially something, but not increasing the operating budget so that you keep that steady flow, but looking at either cap, either a capital reserve special article or a, a single special article or the expandable trust. And my argument is this, you got 25 minutes, active pretty pretty regularly meetings run 16 to 20 people god bless us we're way ahead of our neighbors uh, that that's the most important thing is protecting those guys if you've got 20 people and if your insurance company says 10 years and that year is no good and god forbid if we had an accident you know what those potentials are today every the so happy public that we live in public world that we live in why not step up and buy 10 sets? Because at two sets a year, you know, 10 years you get 20 sets, but now you got antiquated gear and that doesn't replace all 20 sets. That's something that's very valuable to the, to the person that's wearing it. I just felt that it needed discussion and to look at kind of what you're saying. Maybe a special article or maybe fund the, the expandable trust. See how the budget comes out in December, January, see where it's at and fund it that way and make a 10-year purchase and get ahead of things. That, that was my push, he brought it up, and I said, I'll come and defend it and so you don't have to take that responsibility. So anybody that feels it's absolutely ridiculous, <coughs> it's me that's, that's pushed that. So all you. Thank you. <laughs> so all me. <laughs> Well, that almost makes the argument for a special warrant article rather yeah. than adding to the expendable trust, but I think that uh, I think regardless, your case for equipment is something you can take out of here feeling like you've gotten some direction from us okay. to, to add 5,000 onto that. And, then and figure uh, out if, we, if we go with a special warrant article, that way we'll uh, find out how the townspeople feel okay. about, about doing that. Um, mm -hmm. That can always change mm -hmm. uh, between now and then, but I think it's probably smart to keep all of those options open at this point. Okay. Um, okay. Any other thoughts, Dick? No, that John? all sounds John? workable. It's very palatable. Okay, great. Well, no, uh, yeah. no motion necessary. Yeah. No, no, just to a uh, work session. A okay. yeah. um, couple other items really quick, I guess. Um, sure. All the motels have been inspected. Mm -hmm. um, that was something me and Dick were talking about, but all the motels that we haven't inspected on a regular basis have been inspected. Um, those went well, very well. Good. Um, we also prepared a voluntary inspection letter in case we want to send it out to any other places that we don't inspect on a regular basis, whether it be ski clubs or rental units or residential. Um, so we have that. As a little caveat to that, maybe is there something that, that we can pass on to the insurance companies with a letter saying, hey, you know, this place has been inspected, they can give it to the insurance company, it might help them out as a break in the insurance, or if it, maybe um, to encourage, well, them, encourage yeah. them to get inspected, I guess is what I'm trying yeah, to I'm trying to sure. suggest there. If there might be a caveat there that they can use, and maybe not. But. Yeah, I don't know. Um, on that note, Last month, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that, we, I did an ISO review with ISO. They came to the station and did a review um, where you, they asked me all kinds of questions about everything from fire prevention to fire trucks to how many axes you have on a fire truck to how often you inspect, who inspects, who does teaches the kids at school. Um, that went really, really, really well. It's a simpler process than it used to be, thank God. Um, mm -hmm. it, we're, we're in good, really good shape. And a lot of the stuff we've done in the last eight, ten years, policies that were put in place, um, new things we've added, increased that a lot. 
Um, so well, it sounds like it'll be four months before I get my report back, but it sounds like we'll gain some ratings on insurance. fire insurance. Oh, nice. um, it'll be, nobody will ever probably notice it because it's going to be pretty small, but we are making gains in the proper direction. Um, and it comes from everything everybody does, not just me, but um, and by having more time to put at it, that has definitely, definitely helped. It's good to get in there, three four days a week. Um, met with the fire marshal, the big fire marshal, last week at our North, at our North Washington Valley Mutual Fire Aid, Fire Chiefs meeting, monthly meeting down on the Conway. Uh, just a couple of quick notes from him. Um, he had a whole stack of bills that's going through legislature and. Anti-regulation is alive and well everywhere in our state government. Um, he sounded pretty discouraged with the amount of anti-regulation that's going on. Um, from everything to Airbnb stuff to you name it. You name it. But he said, it was, especially with the new people in charge, mm -hmm. um, anti-regulation is big time. Nobody wants regulations for anything. Yeah. And if, you, and if you tell them they have to have a sprinkler head in their walk-in cooler, they go to the governor's office and fight. And then, you know, everything goes from there. So it was interesting. It was a great meeting to have with him because we don't, I don't get to see him very much. Um, probably the first time I've ever seen him. Um, they have had success with a lot of arsons in the southern part of the state, so that was a positive note. Um, there's a tent bill that, as an example of anti-regulation. Somebody is trying to put a bill through this legislature for to do away with any permits or inspections on tents. On tents. Found that interesting. Really? Yep. Someone's pushing, trying to push that bill through the legislature. Is it Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> he left <laughs> already. <laughs> so, um, so that was a little discouraging. Um, Another example, someone's, there's a bill, the state actually bans bottle rockets. They don't ban fireworks, but bottle rockets in particular ban. Someone's trying to put a bill through to remove them. Um, a little bit of discussion on short-term rentals. Um, that didn't go all that well either. Um, short-term is like an Airbnb. Airbnb or vacation, rentals. vacation rentals. Um, I didn't have much luck with that. Um, they're looking at it differently. Um, but there was a little discussion on that. Mm -hmm. I think short-term rentals, it's going to be a very challenging, difficult discussion, very, as far as inspecting them or dealing with them. Well, last time we talked about that, uh, you had mentioned that if there's a facility housing more than, I don't know, 12 or 16 people. Six, 16, if I said. Yeah. yeah, it's... Then that falls into a category that gives us authority or identifies the yeah. need to inspect. Was that, was that, was that... Uh, well, I think the numbers were the difference between one and two family dwellings what they can legally do with a one and two family dwelling okay. compared to when it becomes rooming and lodging where you got to have sprinklers. Right. Yeah, that's the big one. Well, well if somebody's system. advertising that they sleep 16. But you're happen? allowed that the difficulty gets into, this is some of the argument I've had with other chiefs and even the okay. marshal's offices. Right. The occupancy says this, you know, say one and two family, you can have two families, which cousins and great nieces don't count as family and up to three guests so you could you could have a family you could have a family and you could bring three guests and he could bring three guests and it's still considered one and two family dwelling and and you guys could rent it that so way. They don't the minute you go over those quantities it turns into room and lodging they don't limit the number of people that can be in a family so it's they, but they limit the term. The term family has a definition. It okay. can't be forty-seven cousins and fourteen nieces. And, Got it. Um, yeah. But it gets very wishwashy because how do you know that right. that John 
if John's paying for it and just all his friends, sh it, yeah. it gets very wish-washy. It's the okay. only way I can explain it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, you know, if you're following this or your buddy is, if you can let us know. About We're trying to change figure it out as we go. Developments. Uh, okay. I, I've looked at it and for the most part, I think we're fairly safe in Jackson. Okay. There's a lot of Airbnbs going on. I know I looked at 50 to 100 of them, and there was only two that I felt were on the border of being rooming and lodging. Mm -hmm. And most of them, and I say most of them, most of them, you truly think about, is this a safe building to get out of? Most of the rentals are. Okay. I mean, there's a few, Yeah. but you're always going to have some stuff. Oh, I'm glad you're up on it. So we're keeping an eye on it. All right. And I think that's all I had. All right. I'll get out of your hair. Thank you. Thanks for the report. I don't have any hair. Appreciate it. That's right. None of us do. All right. Um, Thank you, Jay. We up next have a uh, trustee of the trust funds withdrawal request, and I'll make it and see if I can get a, uh, a motion and a second on it. Board of Selectmen are requesting the follow withdrawals from the trust funds as indicated below. $526.27 from the Dry Hydrant Expendable Trust, trust Fund 0049 to be paid out to Lakes Region Fire Apparatus, Inc., dated, uh, invoice dated uh, October 23rd, 2017, invoice number 27299. $500 from the Police Department Equipment Expendable Trust Fund, 0051, uh, invoice for to surveillance once, dated 11817, and that is for project number 17110-8N210. And $24,720.85 from the Transfer Station Expendable Trust Fund 0028 for miscellaneous invoices dated November 16th through November 17th. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve that. It's 2016 through 2017. Isn't that what I said? You, I said, said? you said the 16th. Oh, okay. I meant, okay, okay. 2016, November to November 2017. Thank you. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Any uh, <coughs> comments before we vote? Either one of you? No. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Betsy, what's your knitting? A sweater for Lucy Gatchel. For me? Actually, not for you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'd pay to see you in that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I was hoping. <laughs> so next up here, uh, Hazardous Waste Day from 2018. Uh, looks like uh, we made better use of that than the previous year. Um, uh, looks like this year's cost was to the town of Jackson was eighteen hundred twenty-four dollars and fifteen cents. So the recommendation is to appropriate two thousand dollars for this, and why the extra? Well, last year we budgeted um, twelve fifty. Okay. So because the cost was eighteen, I'm thinking. I mean, you can leave it at eighteen if you want, but. I'm thinking if there's more interest, maybe 2000 might be. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, makes sense. Uh, either one of you like to make a motion to appropriate $2,000 to the uh, Hazardous Waste Project drop-off day at Conway? This is a re 2018 request. I have a date set, and they need these letters. But this would be a budget line item, right? Um, this gets this gets into the transfer station um, budget line item, yes. Right, so we don't need to make a motion on it. Oh, just, okay. So this is just an FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just have to approve that I'm putting two, or you oh, guys okay. are signing off on the two thousand dollar appropriate. Okay. So that's the plan. Is that that you will we'll see that item go up from twelve fifty to two thousand, mm -hmm. and so no signature necessary on the first okay. page. Excellent. And next up is a notice of intent to cut. 
Uh, this is for map R24, lot one, Randy and Beatrice Davis. Um, any uh, questions on this intent to cut? Mm -hmm. Looks like we've got... Negatory. Okay, very good. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the intent to cut for uh, Randy and Beatrice Davis. Make that motion. And I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. <clears throat> Next up is the MTAG program update. You guys want to come up and sure. fill us in on all the developments from the last time? Well, I think really what we're looking for is some fire. Um, it's all been um, discussed and accepted among the selectmen and the planning board and so on, and the only element we're not positive of is how it's all going to be funded. Um, so at one point there was talk about um, putting out a warrant article, um, and then uh, when I spoke with the people in Plan New Hampshire, they said most towns don't do that. Um, and so when I was speaking with Julie Apple about it, she was thinking that if we um, are expecting that each time we get a bill, um, we'll be reimbursed for it quickly, um, then it probably wouldn't need to be a warrant article if we're not going to be sort of out of any town money between the time when the bill is paid and the um, reimbursement comes. So we just want to figure out how you want to approach it. I did say, though, because at one point you had said we would need to write a check for the 13000 and I said... I, I, okay, I misspoke then. Okay. We'd be paying on a monthly basis, so it would be 2000 here, 2000 there, and we'd get reimbursed, as I understand it, each time within a 30-day period. And that may need to be a Peter question. No, I don't know about that. Yeah. So, we, before we do any final signing with um, Plan New Hampshire, we want to know how you guys... How the town feels about the approach. Scott, anything to add to that? Not, not to that particular point. No. Okay. Mm, sit. <laughs> so we really sure. <laughs> so we're not necessarily completely clear on how the payout reimbursement process is going to work. Initially, we had asked Peter <coughs> to weigh in on whether or not the. Um, article because we were originally expecting to, to write a warrant article and we asked him if we needed to write it for the whole amount or what we were going to be contributing and he said you would need to write the warrant for the whole amount meaning the 13000 even though our cost would only be about 2500 So if we're still only responsible for the 2500 I don't know what his comments would be if it's not a lump sum payment. So I don't know, and we're getting refunded along the way, so that I don't Well, we have some time. We had thought yeah. we had to have it signed, uh, the contract with Plain New Hampshire signed by December 31st, but she says no. Um, so we have a little more time to figure out the best way to do it. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Um, and it sounds like we're, we will expect invoices to just come trickling in on a monthly basis. That's so right. am I running it by Peter then to verify I would think yeah, so. I would ask him to make sure because we've always raised all the money in the past mm -hmm. at a town meeting, and then uh, gotten we we pay the bill and then we get reimbursed. But it sounds like this could be <clears throat> a shorter circuit. So yeah, you know, let's check on it, and we've got time. If I remember it correctly, <clears throat> when we talked with the consultant about the, <clears throat> about this issue. He suggested that he could work with us to make sure that, you know, that we're not paying him before we get paid from the grant fund. Okay. Or I think we have to have a paid bill that goes to Plan New Hampshire, but it can be a matter of a few days or, or something or other. I think that's the wording. Okay. So they determine that it's an appropriate bill to be paid out of the grant and then they reimburse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The ahead. total grant amount is 18550 or 185. Um, I think it's 18550. 18550, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, according to this. Yeah. Um, and so, um, again, the town portion is, is tiny, but the whole amount um, would be paid out over a period of just about a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
May I bring up an unrelated? Do you have anything else on well, this? Well, are we also asking the board to sign the contract with resilience? Yes, but I, I think once we get it all signed at once, we we can get both the resilience in. Well, I just I didn't know in terms of okay. schedule. I'm not sure where things are. Well, you know that's a good point. We because, may as well. Because the other part is that <clears throat> we. We hope to get going sooner than the town meeting, even if we have to put sure. this. Yeah, have a more so, um, I'd like to get going sooner, at least to, to do some outreach and some education so that it, it stands a better chance of passing a town meeting, right. assuming that it has to set up, set up. Um, That's a great point, yeah. But <clears throat> that will, the, you know, some of that work, if we work with consultants, will cost some money. Our understanding is we could probably pay that amount of money out of the planning board budget, and that payment would then also qualify as our the town's matching fund to the. So in a way, we could we wouldn't even need to bring that matching fund to the town meeting if we pay that out of the planning board budget, because that. You know, say it would be twenty five hundred on the planning board budget. That twenty five five hundred counts as our matching fund mm -hmm. against. And that's the, about the what it was cost in the first couple of months of the year. Twenty one to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it it may be that we don't need to bring the grant before the town because we're going to get paid so quickly yeah. from the grant relative to the the bills. We may not need to bring. The matching funds before the town because that can be paid out of the planning board budget. That's just out of the budget. Right. Yeah, good thing. Yeah. It's a little complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the way I understand it. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that's a really good point. If you guys are able to sign the resilience uh, planning contract um, before the end of the year, that'll let us get a jump on it, uh, do our planning in December, and have a running start in January. Okay. So are we clear on what we need clarification from Peter on? I like believe so. I will okay. double check with you one more time before all right. I read that. Great. Great. Because that won't be a problem at all to have this all finalized by the end of the year. So that everybody feels comfortable in the process. Great. And that's the goal. And I have one other thing I should have brought up in public comment. But it occurred to me as we were talking about this. Um, there's some people who've been involved in housing issues um, in this study who have trouble meeting here because they can't hear in this room. And I'm just wondering if you could put it into the budget um, to be able to do something or other that enhances the um, acoustics within the room. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Just curtains. Yep. Yeah. Interior design aspect. Can you? Kathy Darcy's good at that. Hmm. All right, I'm sorry. Can you just make a note to um, contact Sean Doucette and uh, ask him if he's got some time to come in and make some recommendations for the room, for the sure. acoustics of the room? That would be great. Thank you. Um, he's played a role in <coughs> what happened at the Whitney, and so. He's got some time to contribute. That'd be great. At no cost to us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, very good. Thank you for the proposal, <coughs> or for the updates, rather, Betsy and uh, Scott. I appreciate you guys' time that you've put into this. Definitely. Thank you. Glad to do it. On behalf of the town. Uh, next up, Alpine Drive. Oh, lucky me. Um, where are we with that, uh, um, Pat? I know that we've had fences up, fences down, concerns about plowing, turnaround versus dead end. Uh, can you give us a quick synopsis, Pat, of uh, where we are up there as far as you know? I mean, put you on the spot, but I know you're real familiar with what's going on up there. The, and primarily, the gate I'm, went up. The gate came down because of Mr. Defusco, and uh, that's kind of where it's at. I think he's got a whole bunch of information, and Dick has got some information, and I think that we should probably be able to come up with a civil uh, answer at the end of. Debate discussions. Very good. 
And before we start, I just from your perspective, is there anything that in your mind is going to keep us from maintaining that road at the same level we maintained it at last year? Um, Are there any changes up there that concern you? Well, gates down, I guess the big question is do we go in and plow it if it's not the town's property, which I think yeah. everybody in the room understands that it's not the town's property for whatever right. reason it is, it's not the town property. And so I think I would be looking for direction by the end of this to know whether we want to go in there and plow like we always have, or if we don't. And is there anything in the way of you plowing the way you always have up there right now with the gate uh, down? If the gate's down, I mean, we can go in and plow the same way we always have. If okay. the gate's up, uh, right. it's going to be a little more difficult. Right. But and it's, I mean, if, if the gate's up and we can't plow, we can certainly the town portion of the road will be taken care of. Okay. And Dick, you want to add to, uh, you want, would you like to come up, Mr. DeFusco? Or? Sure. All right. Um, just to get us up to speed, I know there have been developments since the well, last time we talked about well, There are two issues here. There is my issue with the town and my issue with the property. Two very separate things. This is the third time I've appeared before this board. The first time was in 96. Second time was in 2009, and now we're in 2017 on the same subject. I'm really tired of beating a dead horse, and I don't care who owns the turnaround. I just want my peace. I want it maintained. I want to be able to have access to my home. Um, I've made arrangements to, to take care of things if the town doesn't plow the turnaround. We've all known that the town's never owned it, that there has been several issues where the town was supposed to take possession of it in 09. Back 50 years ago, they were supposed to take possession of it, fell through the cracks. Um, the fence is down, it should stay down. Uh, as it stands now, I have a judge who said that as long as there's no construction going on up there, that I can park there as long as I stay out of the way of construction vehicles. There's not going to be any construction going on up there. <coughs> you can't do it. Um, I got all this stuff here. I guess what, what was kind of upsetting is that the board ruled that they don't plow the turnaround when in fact uh, we've got two road agents, uh, got letters from Black Mountain, several of the people who own homes on that road. I've been there 37 years. Town has always maintained it. They've always pushed back the snow. And now there seems to be issues. There are also rulings about plowing private roads, which is what I came before the board for 20 years ago. And uh, I won't go into the legalese, it's a lot of stuff, but basically it says that if, if you maintain it, then there's acceptance and dedication. The public has used it, so it's been accepted as a public way, and as dedication because you've maintained it for over 50 years. Also back in, oh, Sletman's meeting, June 17th, 1996. Selectman Kelly made a motion that we classify our class six roads that would be private roads, not many private roads, but they're things that fall to the cracks like this cul-de-sac did for 50 years. Classify our class six roads as emergency lanes in accordance with RS 23159A. This will allow the town to do work on these roads using highway funds and not to have to worry about them converting to class five roads, which are public roads. Kind of like the public has been using it, but technically not a public road. It's been accepted as a public road and maintained as a public road, but not a public road. And this has been going around for years now. And there have been several solutions over the years, but they've never come to fruition. Highway funds not to worry about converting to class five roads. The motion was seconded by selecting a cave and voted unanimously. This is a ruling over 20 years ago. And then there was a ruling in 09 
um, that for that land to be viable to build on, he has to deed the turnaround of the cul-de-sac to the town. Because without the town owning the cul-de-sac, there isn't enough frontage for him to build. I say we're running around in circles for 20 or 30 years. This is absolutely ridiculous. And now, for whatever reason, with all this stuff, uh, the town has decided to stop plowing. Like I said, I only have to plow 10 more feet of driveway if the cul-de-sac doesn't get plowed. But then again, the safety and the efficiency of plowing, you've got, you've got a 10-foot wide snow fighter coming down into a 25-foot wide dead end. And then they have to back up 160 feet to turn around. Or they can go 50 feet, just drive around the turnaround, which is what they're doing now. They're going down, and we haven't had much snow, but listen, it's, we're getting there. But they're going down there, and by per order of the town, they're lifting their plows, because they're not supposed to maintain the turnaround, by your order, and then they're driving around the turnaround to get out. The police department is also driving around the turnaround. Um, just to give you an idea, this is what it looked like. Let me ask Pat to weigh in since he's just. I, I, I'm okay. I'm listening to this. I haven't heard anything really new yet. Well, wait a minute. Okay. I haven't heard anything really new yet, and I'm more curious as what you're asking us to do as a town. Just keep maintaining the turnaround for for the plows for for the. If we if there is a, an emergency up there. Yeah. We're doing this for you. Well, I understand, I've talked to the fire chief about emergency vehicles. I've talked to the road agent about turning a truck around. Now I'd like to talk to you. This whole thing came up because of the fact that your neighbor put in a gate that excluded us from using that turnaround. Correct. And you. Correct. Now you've taken that to Yes, I have a lawsuit in process. And it seems that, to begin with, you have the right to use that term, the call this out. Well, okay, for the sake of argument, yeah, I, I have the right to use it. But the court has not found an ownership or... Well, no, it's not up to the court to decide ownership of a turnaround. That's not what I have a lawsuit for. Again, there are separate issues here. Mm -hmm. There's the town maintaining the, the cul-de-sac. As far as whether you want to own it or you don't want to own it, I don't care. I don't care who owns it. That's not my issue. You're not. This isn't. This whole cul-de-sac isn't. Doesn't have anything on me other than it makes it difficult for everybody to get down in there. I have a lawsuit pending, or a preliminary lawsuit to carry through with a lawsuit for adverse possession because the property I've been maintaining, plowing, cleaning, fixing, mm -hmm. is on Pagley Rules property. Always knew that, everybody knew that, just like everybody knew the town didn't own the turnaround. No secret, it's always been that way. So whatever you guys decide with the turnaround has nothing to do with me as far as legalities and parking. <coughs> I, that's a separate issue because I don't park in the turnaround. I park on the edge of the turnaround, which is belongs to somebody else. And this is the way it's, the house has been there for 50 years. This is, you know, the stairs. There, there was never, the house was developed and this is where it was meant. Right or wrong, this is the way it was. Not my decision, not, you know, the developers did. And, and that cul-de-sac should have been turned over to the town years ago. But for whatever reason, Again, it didn't. But everyone went about, the public, the highway department, the police, the fire department, me, everyone who lives on the street, all the people who come up there to look at the view since it was cut down, has used it for public access. So this has nothing to do, ownership of the turnaround. I mean, I can come, I can come up with an issue on the turnaround, but it has nothing to do with what I'm here for. Don't you have a driveway? Never had a driveway. The house was, because 
my house is. If you look at Tuckerman and Ravine, okay, the horseshoe, and it all drops down. Well, my house is the same way, and I'm at the top of the horseshoe, and it all drops down around me to six percent, a six percent pitch, which is like a Cape Cod house. I didn't develop it. I didn't build it. This is what was built and what was accepted by the town back then. And you always walked up the stairs from my house to park on a piece of property. At the time, who knows? I didn't know if I owned part of it or if the town owned part of it or if the people who owned that five-acre parcel owned part of it. It was never an issue. It shouldn't be an issue now because where I park has no bearing on any work or any development or any work of the town. I mean, it's just out of everybody's way. So just to recap here, just so everything's clear, this issue came to us because your neighbor put up a fence. No, and this I, issue came to you 20 years ago. It didn't come to me. I wouldn't even know. Well, no, but the point <laughs> is that we're here. <laughs> no, here. No, but uh, so, what I'm saying is... Rather than have you interrupt me, let so me sorry, finish what I, I had to say. Thank you. So this issue came to us this board, mm -hmm. which is the first time this board has dealt with this. Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify that with you as well. I understand that. Uh, because your neighbor put up a fence. And we didn't say we never took care of that road. We never said we wouldn't take care of that road. We said we couldn't take care of that road with that fence up. We weren't going to be able to take care of that road with that fence up the way we had in the past. Fence is down. Ask the road agent, anything now physically impairing you from taking care of that road? And he said no. So it's, it's, we're not going to be able to maintain that road the way we've been maintaining it if the fence goes up oh, yeah. again. So other than that, I don't know that there's necessarily an issue up there with us maintaining what the road the way we've always maintained it. Great. Um, that's been... And other than that, like, clearly there are some issues with your neighbor, and they're <laughs> tied up in court right now, and I mean, we wish you the best of luck on it. Dick, do you have anything else to add? No, I, as far as your parking up there, you'll be parking on his land? Or? Well, technically, yes. I always parked on whoever owned that land. That's okay. it was, it was not my general belief. It, my belief for all these years was... It's part of my land, maybe part of the town's land, part of his land. But mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't an issue with anybody because there's no reason to it didn't get in the way of that. It doesn't get in the way of anybody. It doesn't get in the way of him developing that land. I've never been in the way of it. Well, let me I've never been in the way of the town. There was an issue back in nineteen ninety two, but that had nothing to do with me. Yeah. But the town is I have always got along. I, I plow, I push back my own snow. Whether it's the town land or the other guy's land, and the town the town comes in there, and everything is just fine, and then all of a sudden, this. Well, we'll try to accommodate that turnaround and plow it and drive out of there. That would be convenient for us to. Well, so before we move on, Jay and Pat, since you're here, is there anything? <coughs> Life safety issues or road maintenance issues that's physically keeping you from uh, maintaining the road or gaining access to buildings on the road that wasn't there last year. My only issue, I guess, is is you guys are okay with me going in there because it's technically it's not town land. So that's a no. So there's nothing physically keeping you from maintaining correct, that road. Correct. Well, How about gates down, I can go the down the ground and plow just the way I have. Okay. Just to clarify, I did talk to Joe. He he. When we got that little bit of snow that we got, we don't plow dirt in November when it's not frozen. Yeah. So the plow comes up at the end of the pavement because you're gonna okay, start that that the dirt. And dirt. Yeah. Yes. Especially when you it's don't snow. plow dirt in November when it's not frozen. They've done a great job. Jay, they do look great. So, if, if, it, if the gate's down and everything's back to normal to the way it's been for 50 years, Fire Access Code Chapter 18 says everything's good. Okay. My question for you is future, I guess. Somebody needs to think about if, if Paul owns the land. I mean, as long as we're using the turnaround, we're good to go. But just so 
all three of you know, fire access code chapter 18, there has to be a turnaround there. Or within a certain footage, you can't, you can't, like you couldn't have a turnaround 350 feet away. But it can't be backing out 350 feet. Just stay within 150 feet. Mm -hmm. Fire access chapter 18 and FPA 1 says all fire access roads, whether that's a town road, private road, development road, whatever, has to have a turnaround. And so, so if, if two months from now, somebody decides, Pagliari decides to do something with that property, and they're just, there's got to be a turnaround in there. Yeah. Right. Can't, that's can't that's where it. the town would step in, because he also has to have 150 feet of frontage on a town yes. right away. So uh, that's the point that we yeah. would step in okay. and say, you know. I just want as all three of you understand that there has to be. Yeah. And the <laughs> reason for that is for life safety. It's life safety, yeah. So there really are two issues with the town. There's the short-term issue, and then there's really more long-term issue with that turnaround and how this is going to be set in stone moving forward so that we have to revisit this every 10, 20, 30 years. Well, remember the turnaround issue at the end of Carter Notch? Yeah. Similar yeah. circumstances. There was no turnaround. And yeah, we ended up creating one right. as best as we could yep. in the town right away. Right, similar beyond you can't you just can't have a dead end which we don't have dead end that. access. Yeah, so uh, I see. It. So I guess for for the long term, I think we need to maybe get a look up there and see see what can be a, a more uh, permanent um, solution here. I don't know if we need to bring town council in to kind of. Uh, clarify some of these laws and RSAs that, that people are citing. I mean, Jay's, Jay's I know, on top of it, and he's pretty clear on uh, on what we do need to do and don't need to do, and I think we want some very uh, concrete uh, recommendations from the department and the town council on this, don't we? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I would ask you to kind of as long as you're on the phone with Peter anyway, get some clarification on this. Yeah. Cite the RSAs that Jay's talking about. Well, I think about. I'll have Jay right there with me when we're talking about Great, that. and Pat too. Yep. And so that we can For all me, it doesn't matter get on the same it. page with the town council here. We will continue to um, walk softly around neighbor disputes. So there's only so much I think I'm willing as a selectman to be involved with when it comes to that. But we have... Uh, ways to address the issues that concern the town that can hopefully uh, put that side of this to bed. Great. So I will go ahead and I'll ask you to uh, have that conversation at some point within the next two weeks and put this back on the agenda for uh, the next meeting. Hopefully for the last time, but maybe not. We will continue to talk around. I think, think we've we'll 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 we got a little time left. Yes. But for now, right. are you good uh, yes, with our intent mm -hmm. to maintain that? Absolutely. But like I said, I don't care who owns it. Yeah. If it takes more than but two weeks to get these answers, then then fine. But if, if we've got these answers before the next meeting, I want, I'd like to have this on the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It, just a thought. I don't know if a letter or anything needs to go to Paul stating that officially we are taking care of maintaining this road and using it for fire access. I don't know if that needs to be done or not, just so it's on the record that, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I, I don't know if that's something that should be done. Or... Thoughts, John? Um, not off the top of my head. I think it might, might, might be something to think about. I, I don't Somehow, know. Somehow, I think it's that something should be maybe... on the record with the landowner. Yeah. I, I think, think maybe after we talk with Peter about that, what we want to put our feet, like you said, get involved in I mean, personal case, disputes. If the case comes down, Paul must yeah. know that it's going to be used by mm -hmm. someone, yep. whether that's him. Right. So it'd be good for, on the record with a letter, for Paul to know that Pat's plowing on it, and if I need to use it for fire access, that, Fair enough. I mean, legally I can yeah. pretty much use anything in an emergency. We'll ask town council on it for his opinion on getting out a letter as well. Something sometimes it seems like a no-brainer can end up having some adverse effects. Ramifications and I know we've Can't had that happen before. Dick? Uh, 
Yeah. No, that all sounds good. Okay. Sound like a good plan moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds great to me. Okay, great. We hope you can join us for the next meeting. Um, it, it's December 14th. Our next meeting is December 14th. I'll have Julie contact you if it's not going to be on the agenda or if it is and give you... Um, well, they have my email so they can... Yeah. Great. Shoot you an email. Great. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank Back. you. Sir? I just I, I wanted to ask Jay with the quote from the RSA that he, he quoted. If it isn't town property and this is private property, does that person have to maintain the... My, my, code, my codes don't specify who owns it. Right, but I'm just saying, saying would it have to be maintained to by be. that person as a cul-de-sac for you and the, not the town group, but the fire, you as a fireman the fire a code, cul-de-sac? If, if there's a fire access road, you've got to have a fire access road or a fire access turnaround for whatever, then it has to be maintained. But it doesn't, my codes don't say who maintains it or how that it just has to be maintained. Correct, but I guess that was my question was, does there have to be a culture's activity no matter what? And if there right. has to be there, possibly that person should be. One more hand to weigh in. Go ahead. Just, so quickly, for the record, um, status quo the way we've been doing yep. it for the last yes. however long. Okay. Yes. He will be. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you for your time, everybody, on this. Uh, hopefully, this can be resolved to everybody's satisfaction. It's the only way I look at it. It's the only reason I look at it. Okay, uh, transfer station updates. How are we looking up there? Uh, nothing really special. I mean, they're still working on the facade there for the uh, yep. drop off. Um, right. Nothing real new up there to speak of. Okay. Making some progress. Is the sorting table up? I haven't been up. I there. saw it being put together last time I was there. Okay. It arrived. I don't think it's up yet per se, but I saw it uh, sitting down on the ground there, so it probably is up and running now. Well, I think everybody's dedicated to getting that phase of the project done before things get real cold up there. So it's good to hear things are mm-hmm. progressing. Budget update, Dick. We are at ninety. 90- Two percent of our fiscal year in week number 48 of 52, we're uh, at 89.16 percent of our budget. So there's approximately uh, 255,592 dollars and 61 cents uh, remaining on the budget items. Approximately. Okay. Thank you. Will that be in the minutes or will that be published? I bet it will be. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it's on the video. Um, Let's move back to that final. I know you're burning. You've got a burning desire. Next public comment here. Agenda item 7, Jay. Did you want to start that off? I didn't know there was another item. Public comments. Public comments? No. You don't have any? Uh, I don't know. No. Oh, no. Unless you, you know something I don't. I thought you were going to drop a bombshell on us. No? No. no. Okay. Hey, I don't get to hear that much. I, like I think that. you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> you're really good at that. Thank you, Jay. Uh, public comments from anyone else? Joyce. Um, it's really hard for anyone to argue against equipment for the fire department. However, it might be helpful if... Um, Jay's saying that there, you know, he, he's graduated, but the fire equipment suits are, you know, by the one of all the time, so you get some that are two years old, some are four years old, some are six years old. Would it be possible just to know, to have that when you come to the budget meeting or something, so that... Uh, the actual uh, number of suits there to be <laughs> more than five. Of them. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. I, if you want to know the ages, I mean, I have a, there's my capital plan for everybody's gear. Uh, let's see, yeah, I've got 2009, 2009, 2016, 8, 10, 16, 11, 15, and then I've got 13, and then I've got 1, 2, really old, 1, 2, really old, 1, 2, 3, um, so I've got 
some of that info. I mean, not really super specific, but it's kind of a, it's really a mishmash of old, new, newer, newer. You know, because we've done two heat sets a year a year, we, we've got a mix of everything. And like I had said, we're not in terrible shape, but in order to stay in good shape, I need more money. Can you take a look at that document? Um, and yeah, get I was going to say that. Real concrete numbers. On oh, that. But the, the problem with the EH thing is it doesn't work so well. Pat could have. Out of X number of suits. Pat's year is 2005. Okay? That's out of date. But his gear is like really, really, really good shape because he doesn't mm -hmm. run inside the garden buildings. Um, so the, the year thing doesn't always, I mean, we've got gear that's at the 10 year age limit, but it's in really good shape. So I wouldn't say I need to replace it like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But you've got, so, so it doesn't, but I've got gear that's three years old that's- I've Needs got, to be replaced. Like there's a few people, I used to be that way years ago. I had gear that's three or four years old and it would look terrible because it's just ripped or it's black and beat up and worn. Uh, not going to say it was unsafe, but it was warm. Um, so let's see if you can, you know, work with Jane, identify what needs to be replaced in the next two years. Do it, so we don't, so we don't have to go back to you, age. You know what I'm saying? But need. Okay. Other than maybe some little notation Great. beside the age. Today. Yeah. And then really, really brief. Julia, JJ, Julia will work yeah. with you Jay and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get that Thank done. You. We'll base it on need rather than <coughs> age. Okay. We I mean, have to look at it, see good condition, bad condition. Well, I think it would be good to do both age and sure. condition. Sure. There's no, no reason that it can't be done. Mm -hmm. that way. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank, Great. You. Thank you. And you can also do an estimated year of replacement, too. Mm -hmm. Sarah, your hand was up. Yes. Uh, I attended the uh, school meeting the other day, and it was brought to their attention by a couple of us that they have a different budget book. And the reason that happened was years ago, for some reason, they had to have a meeting prior to the regular town meeting, so it had to be made at that time. And since then, they haven't, we haven't had the books together. And I was wondering if that's something that, that, <coughs> that the school board and the selectmen would reconsider putting it together as one book so you have all of your budgetary needs for your town to be in one book. It always was that way, but as I say, there was a special uh, school meeting. I don't recall if it was for the new building or whatever it was, but they had to have their book out earlier and their meeting earlier, so it wasn't in the town of Warren as it always had been. And I wonder if you'd take that into consideration. You're talking about a town report versus a yeah. school mm -hmm. report? Ta mm -hmm. The town report, the book itself, the whole both, the budget for the town and the budget for the school system. I Only actually, I, book. I asked the school about that a few years back and I didn't get a lot of, um, they said it's done at the SAU 9 office and so I didn't get a lot of interest, I guess. Okay, well, maybe it could be reapproached because I think there was some talk about doing that. And uh, also, when you talk about um, the cemetery building, if nobody wants it, what are you going to do with it? If, if there was no bids on it or nobody taking it? Away? Oh, the fire chief said he'd take it if no one wanted it. For the town? For the, for he the would property. take it at his expense. Our goal is to get it off the property, and so since no one has stepped up and expressed a willingness other than the chief, uh, he'll be the one taking it off the property. So is, is it going to be used, I guess, no, it's not going to be used for anything for the town. Personal property. We are giving it on. It's going away. Okay. No longer exists. The only, the only reason it's fairly easy for me to get, the only way to get it out of there is with a crane. Yeah, you got it. Without destroying stuff or messing the fence up. And I actually have access to a crane that's not going to cost me money. If it was going to cost me money, I wouldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been given to anyone that... Wanted it. Showed interest in, in removing it at their expense. Last round for public comments. Anyone? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. gave them a chance. This will be the last public comment from both. Okay. Go ahead. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know what MTAG, I probably should have asked him on the SDC if I didn't want to interrupt, yeah. but I don't know what that is. It's the, just the abbreviation for the grant. I, I don't know and exactly don't what the acronym is, is but it's mm -hmm. for uh, low income house. Uh, low income housing in the town. Okay. Sarah, your hand went up again. Yes. Go ahead. This is about uh, for information for the budget hearings and so on. When uh, you were talking about the 3%, do you take into consideration the use of the town vehicles as being a fringe benefit? Or we'll take it, when we discuss raises, we're going to take into consideration everything. It will be an open discussion of all aspects of how town employees are compensated. James, any comments? You still got two comments. Can't come out the door. Two freebies. Very good to be here. That's okay. Thanks, James. We're glad you're here. You just come and get away from home. Uh, <laughs> any comments? Come on. You can uh, call. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Aye. Okay, Aye. Second. Aye. Second. Aye. 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 A